as you would have seen from the previous video, I was wondering what turbo I should use this time. Because, well, this GT30, which is just a cheapy Chinese one, has got loads of play. It's not dead yet, but you won't be putting this back on. And I also said in the video, it's kind of been a bit of a false economy with like, you know, say like five 100 pound turbos would get me one whole set, which would have been loads better. Obviously I've not paid for, I've only bought one of these turbos because the rest was just things I'd spare. So it's understandable why I did it. But if you was, you know, buying from scratch, then no. So then, I was trying to decide what to do. I could buy another one, and it could fail again in no time. I could go for a more expensive version of the same thing, and it might not be any better. But this car is all about bang for your buck and me not spending money. Partly because I don't want to, and partly because I ain't got much. <laughs> I've got other projects to spend money on. So, I had an idea, and I like experimenting, as you know from the, uh, the pre-turbo throttling stuff. And I like doing crazy stuff, and I like big hole sets, and I'm going to put this on. To most people, this would sound a ridiculously bad idea. A 2 litre with a hole set HX50. 22 centimetre housing. Twin scroll T6. This turbo, the main appeal to this, for me for this turbo, well there's lots of appeals, but the main one is I already own it. It's brand new. It's rusty because it was was out in a damp workshop before I owned it. But it's literally brand new and unused. And it's obviously not going to cost me any money because I've already got it. HX50s are awesome in my opinion. They are really compact. I mean, literally, that compressor housing is no bigger than a normal HX35 one. It's actually barely any bigger than the uh, the GT30 compressor housing. The overall turbo is bigger, but dimensions-wise, HX50 is a super compact, despite being like 800 plus horsepower turbos. And they also spool really well. I mean, like, um, my friend Mark's got one on that RX-7 FD and yeah that's got a 25 centimetre housing so massive on a little two rotor and yeah it's making over 600 brake at fairly low boost on pump fuel and spools brilliantly better than the big money equivalents that most people run and get all excited about and they've got motorsport heritage too um, HX50's HX50R they were called, but HX50 based turbos were what the quite a few Cosworth engined Indy 500 winning Indy cars ran. And um, even the the Tolman, is it Tolman? But the Hart um, Formula One 1 1.5 litre four cylinder turbo engines from the 80s, they ran whole sets which were HX50, HX55 based. And again, great success, um, Ayrton Senna's first sort of competitive car. So yeah, they, they really do the job. They're the, probably the most least, um, least well-known, or the, well, actually no, not least well-known, because they're still well-known. They're the most underused of all the whole sets, in my opinion, how good they are, but they're not that commonly used. And um, yeah. I mean, I've bought some over the years from like compressor racing and stuff. I'm pretty sure they've got some for sale now. That's where Mark got his one for his RX-7. Um, but this one I've had for a long time. And like, I, I mean, look, it's brown surface rust. It's a bit dirty. But as you probably see by the core and stuff, it's brand new. It sounds like a ridiculous idea to put this, being a T6 flange 22 centimetre HX50, on a two litre. But I have ideas and plans. 
and I'm fairly confident this will work. It, to most people, it'll be like, oh my god, that's so stupid, but you should know me by now. I don't listen to people like that. I listen to myself, and uh, I'm going to take you along the way and show you what I'm doing. It might work, it might not. I'm pretty sure it will, but you're about to find out. Right, a couple of minutes later, and I've dismantled the turbo. Wow, the bits I need to. Leaving the compressor side for now because I'm not doing anything to it for the moment. I will in the future because I'll be modifying that. That will no doubt get modified and so on. But the important bit is this, which I'm going to butcher. Basically, what my plan is, from a performance point of view anyway, I can do without modifying this at all. And you'll, you'll see what I mean later. But because I want to make it smaller and lighter, I'm going to chop the living shit out of it. Um, like I said, you don't need to. For what I'm planning to do, most people, because what I'm doing here isn't, again, it, I mean, you wouldn't have really seen it in the UK, and it's not a common thing. But what I'm doing here isn't like some kind of uh, world first. This is well proven. It's just not well known. Um, and you can't. And most people do it with a completely unmodified turbine housing. But to suit what I want to do, this is getting modified, and it's getting modified with an angle grinder. Not only an angle grinder, but the vast majority of it to get most of the way there will be a hell of a lot of choppy chop with an angle grinder. Noisy and dirty and whatever, but it's gonna work. Right, after far, far more time than I care to mention, the turbine housing is looking very different. If you didn't know better, you'd think it was some kind of uh, stainless steel teal housing. It's not finished yet, but it's getting there. I'll show the other side. <clears throat> yeah. Quite a lot of uh, choppy choppy has been happening <laughs> and it's still not finished. Um, yeah. It's gonna be V-band in that. It's gonna be single scroll. It's gonna be, well, about an 11 centimetre housing. Remember it was 22? No, now it's, I'm only going to be running half a scroll. Hence why I've cut loads of it off. <laughs> that is going to magically disappear. Um, yeah, like I said, I could have simply done what has done been done many many times before in america and stuff like that they're running far bigger turbine housings than they need to because they're working with whatever turbo they've got and they can get hold of um i could have just blocked off the one scroll and be done with it but as ever with anything here as soon as i i turned up with the turbo and told thomas my idea he was like well yeah why don't we cut this off cut that off cut this off and do it that way you know, things tend to escalate. So, yeah. While you could do exactly the same by just making some kind of block off plate that completely blocks one scroll, I've done it the complicated, but very cool way. <laughs> um, obviously looks a lot better and weighs a lot less now too. And a lot smaller. Obviously, Thomas will weld a V-band to that, so it'll be obviously how it fits. This will be made to kind of look like one, and yeah, it look kind of like that, which is pretty awesome, like a fucking race car. Like I said. Um, if you look at a HX50R IndyCar turbo, it actually looks 
weirdly similar to that turbine. It's uh, got like a, you know, more of a rounded look to it like this. And yeah, I know the HX50 is ridiculously big for my car, but well, hopefully you know by now from all my other cars, I know what will spool and what won't. And I get it spooling, don't worry there. So yeah, most of the job now is uh, Thomas's welding handiwork needed for this. Speaking of uh, escalating quickly, look at the Ford F1 chassis now. This is BMW front subframe bit, front steering, front suspension, everything currently on these coilovers. This awesome bit of fabrication is going to be the front strut towers. This and this is because it's obviously being triangulated um, front and rear as well as some kind of side to side if I remember right. And maybe the main thing on the escalating quickly thing is this is well, that is the rear tyres I'm going to show you now, and this is roughly the width for the fronts. Look at those rear tyres. It makes these front triple eights look like they're two two fives or something. But these are two nine five wide triple eights that are currently borrowed off Thomas's Nissan Silvia, and they are about the minimum width really to look correct with these motherfuckers <laughs> these are mnh roadmaster the roadmaster race master sorry m and race m and h race master road legal drag tires and they are fucking enormous absolutely ridiculous they are 15s, 30 inches tall, and 18 inches wide. So yeah, 15 inch wheels, they'd be beadlocks. 30 inches overall height, 18 wide. For us normal people that don't work in uh, Imperial, 18 inches wide is about 450, I think, wide tire, which is fucking ridiculous so yeah this thing is mental absolutely mental and the craziest shit's no doubt still to come do you know what i mean this is like this thing just gets crazier every fucking day thomas has an idea it gets crazier he tells the customer the customer laughs his head off and says yeah do it and <laughs> and it goes from there.